that's the weirdest shit ever. Uh, young Mao just became old Mao. It's only been four years. Is that is that what communism does to you? I don't know why, but this has always been the most requested video ever. Like, I honestly get a comment a day, almost one comment every single day asking me to do continents versus continents. And this entire time, I've just been like, no, that, that doesn't sound interesting at all. I, I, there's no way it's going to be entertaining. I will admit the last video that I did with Mongolia kind of changed my perspective. I mean, obviously, this is just going to be between Europe and Asia, but it's more of what wins, the factories of all of Europe or the manpower of all of Asia. And I feel like ideology-wise, this is relatively balanced with democracy in both North America and Australia. You already saw we got communism in Asia, fascism in Europe, and then two not aligned in Africa and South America. I wanted to try to make things a little bit more fair so no one is starting with any sort of military divisions, uh, but this unfortunately might actually help out Europe quite a bit because of all those damn factories. But you know what? None of this matters because Australasia is totally going to win this. If they're not your pick, please go get your head checked because they are obviously going to dominate here. I'm confident that they're not going to be totally boring and do absolutely nothing in this video. Wow, I'm kind of shocked. Immediately we have communism on the rise in South America as well as fascism is, is slightly growing in Africa. Obviously they've got a long way to go, but I'll keep my eye on it. I feel like I might be underestimating North America, but I just can't really see them doing all that much besides taking over the South, unless they build a massive navy, which I doubt it. I mean, they are at 16 ships so far, and I doubt the other continents are really worried about their navy. So we'll see. Africa's just out here exporting all their resources. Glad to see that hasn't really changed. I'd like to see them do something though. They could be a wild card in the Eastern Hemisphere. They're just trading with Germany and North America mostly. Ooh, but I will say, believe it or not, about a year and a half into this campaign, and they do have the most divisions at the moment. I'm sure they're not very powerful, but that's still something. I do gotta admit, one of the great things about this campaign is, damn, things are running real quick. Usually it takes forever to get through these starting years. Interesting, so fascism has now taken the lead in South America. Okay, as well as it's a little bit easier to keep an eye on diplomacy. Germany's improving relations, and of course they're being guaranteed by the North. The first battle plan has been drawn, and it's by Asia. Invading Hitler, actually. I guess we can assume they think they're stronger. That's the weirdest shit ever. Uh, young Mao just became old Mao. It's only been four years. Is that, is that what communism does to you? Here's a surprise. I honestly would have never guessed it'd be these two continents going at it first. I mean, it's a pretty safe war. Honestly, nothing... Nothing's gonna happen, I don't think. Uh, North America's pretty weak right now, so it's not like they can do anything even if they wanted. I mean, they do have more ships, and they could act as like a, an annoyance once Europe gets involved. You know, they might actually be a little bit more than just annoying, since Asia has no navy. Okay, now things got all of a sudden pretty interesting. At this point, while everyone's sitting here with at least 50 divisions, we've got Australasia chilling here with six. Damn, you guys are getting powerful. You might want to let up there. Don't end this too soon, guys. Damn, all right, that's a big slap in the face to just about every other continent. Um, Brazil or South America is choosing to stay non-aligned, so they won't be helping out anyone. Maybe, maybe Africa, depending on what they do. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know, because the Africans are slowly converting to fascism, but it's, it's taken a long time. All right, I know I've been shitting on this continent quite a bit, but at least they are doing something. They're sending volunteers. That's nice. Also, the North Americans have actually taken a few islands. Obviously, it's not... A really big deal though. I wasn't really expecting this, but you know, South America is actually keeping up with the North more than just factories because they're only a little bit behind there as well as they technically have a bigger military. All right, you guys just put yourself in a really, really messed up situation. Especially because I think Germany has a bigger Navy. Oh yes, they do. I, I should have expected that. So, um, will we see North America get divided by Europe and Asia? Uh, probably. It's kind of starting to look like that. I'm not exactly sure how well defended this coastline is. Apparently not very well at all. They've already landed. Oh shit, okay, well here goes the push from Newfoundland. Uh, you know, the US should be fine either way, although they did just also lose Bermuda. Okay, yeah, things are slowly gonna get worse. I do have to say, the fact that we're six years into this campaign and Communist China still only has 283 divisions Really shows that that, uh, that Mongolian campaign was fucking crazy. You know, North America really screwed up here. I, I really didn't think they'd be fighting probably the two strongest continents, but they seem to be doing okay. Wait, no, I, I immediately take that back. They fucked up really bad. They pretty much unknowingly caused the formation of Eurasia. 
I was wondering if we'd ever see that kind at Unify. Communism and fascism now comes together. I hope you're happy. Needless to say, this is definitely not the way I expected this video to go. We have the Europeans landing in Boston, and uh, I guess they can send over their entire military because that Eastern Front with Asia is now safe. At least for now, because that, that will obviously change. Wow, this is incredible. Asia is now using the superiority of Europe's navy to transport divisions across the Atlantic, which is why, yeah, everything is just collapsing over here. Oh, but the North Americans were building nukes though, which means other continents are more than likely building them as well. Actually, I just checked, not yet. No one has the technology, but someone's gonna pick up those nuclear reactors, so that is gonna be pretty huge. The peace deal just occurred, and uh, things just went back to normal. Although most of this stuff is now under European control. I, I don't know how the US kept their independence. Oh, well not, not much longer. Okay, why did, why'd they do that? So they're dead again. Everything now looks disgusting once again over here. Please, can you just annex this territory? I don't want to have to look at this. South America is desperately trying to keep the North alive, even though that's gonna fail. I think they know they're on the chopping block next. There we go, now that's at least a little bit better. So, I guess everything in this continent is now a puppet of Germany's. Asia might have very small friends, uh, but I don't think so. Alright, now what is this faction gonna break up? They, they gotta eventually kinda cut ties, cause there's no point in kinda being together. Oh, that is not good for communism. Uh, Great Zimbabwe just formed up. Africa went fascist, so I'm assuming they'll join the faction as well. Oh, there it is. Wow, that did not take long at all. Uh, now, who's fabricating on who? That's what I want to know. It's Communist China on Germany. So, maybe they have more divisions, or they think they can win. Either way, it's coming up. So, we're basically going to see Asia versus both Europe and North Africa. Doesn't seem too fair. Although, keep in mind, this continent just got obliterated, so they probably don't have any divisions. They will though, as time goes by, they'll get more strength, so that might help out. Here it is, it's just unfortunate that a lot of nations ended up changing their name, I think due to the Road 56 trees. Anyways, here's Asia versus Europe though. Oh crap, well this front in the Caucasus Mountains probably won't work out for Mao. I, I doubt it. Uh, how about up here? Oh, is there anybody? There's no one over here. Oh shit. Adolf, uh, you had like 150 days to bring these divisions towards the Eastern Front. What the hell were you guys doing? Yep, that's kind of what I expected. That will definitely help out quite a bit. Let's see if South America or Australia join something. Oh, Asia already had some divisions ready to go. I guess they were just probably sitting here. So they're gonna grab some territory. That's not gonna last very long though. Oh, that's huge. That's a big mistake. If Asia was able to keep Africa out of this territory, if they were able to just kind of block them off right here, they would have been fine but that's apparently not the case. I'm sure they weren't expecting these guys to join the faction. Dang, and Europe is already doing amazing in Turkey, uh, although obviously they're losing different fronts, specifically everything in the north. Wow, well there are over 500 Asian divisions out there, and uh, with 600 factories, that helps out quite a bit. Oh, and I'm sure this is this has gotta be nice. Just a little bit. Once again, another twist in this campaign. I honestly thought this was gonna be such a boring video. Uh, we've got communism rising up in both Brazil and North America. The Western Hemisphere have just had a really rough time in this video. They're just getting ripped apart. There's also growing support for democracy in, in basically the US territory. Yeah, that could be kind of a problem. Africa, how did you guys already run out of manpower? You're at zero? You've only been in the war for a month. That's obviously gonna be a really big problem because I thought they'd contribute a little bit in that category, especially because Germany only has less than 5 million and this front isn't going very well. Everyone at this point is in some sort of war, even South America with that civil war, uh, and in order to view things, well, I, I am actually gonna have to use Australia, so they do have a purpose for this video. Oh man, okay, well that conflict just caused Brazil, or neutral South America, to join this faction. Let's see if the other side joins the communists. Oh, I didn't even realize there is a communist team so far. Uh, unfortunately, something really, really weird happened. Because Brazil declared war, all these divisions just popped up in their territory. So Mao is continuing to do really, really well in Eastern Europe, uh, although he is losing the Middle East quite badly. Oh no, actually he's getting a grip over, at least in Turkey. Also yeah, this is uh, quite annoying, uh, I'm sure, for the AI. Well, I mean, as soon as they kill all these units, at least uh, they'll be able to send them to the real front. I really don't understand how Mao's still doing so well in North America. He almost has all of the West Coast. I know that these puppets have at least a very small military. They should be doing better than this. 
but maybe they're helping out in different fronts. The sad thing is, this was almost an ideal scenario for Europe. They had Africa on their side, South America and North America was once under their control. The Civil War is really hurt. I've been looking at this fucking guy all game, and I just want to know what's up with him. He looks depressed. Can you get him off the battlefield? This dude looks like he's going to tell me not to come to school tomorrow. Real quick, you know, the casualties aren't as bad as I would have thought. We've seen much higher from China, or the Soviet Union, I guess. 10 million isn't that horrible. Germany losing almost 5 is, uh, I feel like a little bit above average, but I'm not sure. Anyways, yeah, this entire side is just going down. Adolf still technically exists in Ireland with two nukes. He could still cause some havoc if he wants, as well as, you know, he can hide out in Iceland and Greenland. That, that might be fun. And again, with two nukes, he can nuke two different places. Anime should exist in every world. Here's finally the end of our huge continental war. Surprisingly, Communist China only took one state. Alright, that is, again, just the most unexpected shit. Oh wow, that actually doesn't look that bad at all. I was expecting something horrible. And we do still have the European borders. They're just communist now. And hey, you know, there was only two countries that ended up surviving out of six. I would say it's a tie. Definitely a tie. Anyways, guys, yeah, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I, I, for a long time, tried to avoid doing this video, but I'm glad that I did. And there's way other ways we could have done it. Uh, I really wanted to try to uh, maybe do subcontinents next time if we were to come back to it, like the Middle East, uh, Southern Asia. We, obviously, we need to split up this continent because this, this shit was way too powerful. I could do the same thing with Europe because they also could, they could have won this pretty easily. Whatever the case is, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. And as always, big thanks to my Patreon supporters. Franco is thick. Leather Daddy Lennon. Matthew Rembish. Free Cruise. Swiss Argo. Jake Paul's My Daddy. Tyler. Maxi G. Sean Spillman. Jen's the Love Disc. Father, Uncle, Grandpa. Roosevacation. Matthew E. Jungkook's Bay. Elijah Senpai. And Elfie C.